So, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Movie trilogies. Movie trilogies are great. Some of the best movies of all time have come from trilogies. You have a chance to get a much larger and intricate story told because you just have so many options and so much time to tell it. But sometimes movies get made into trilogies that obviously weren't supposed to be trilogies. They just happen to have a three movie deal or some crap like that. And as a result, the movies get worse as time goes on, or the third one just ends up being crap by itself. Today we're taking a look at a prime example of that, The Mummy 3. This movie did not need to happen. The first two mummies I consider classics. They're amazing. They're terrifying. They're action filled. They're laughable. They're just everything you could want from a movie. This one is, well, it's like it was trying to cash in on its former glory. That's really about the only way I can describe it. So get ready. Here's Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Why? So since the first movie started off in Egypt and the second movie started off in Egypt, it makes sense that the third movie would start off in China. Okay. And I'm not sure if it's just trying to convince us that it's a mummy movie, but these things look strangely like Chinese pyramids. I don't know much about Chinese architect and the whatever past ancient history, but I don't know that they had pyramids. So instead of being an Egyptian priest named Dimhotep, this time the mummy is Jet Li. Interesting choice. An emperor that conquered thousands and thousands of countries and blah blah blah. He's a bad guy. You should fear him. And he buried people under the wall of China. Actually, that you have to pay attention to. It does come into play later. The Emperor's mystics taught him mastery over the five elements. What? What five elements? Fire, water, earth, wood, and metal. Okay, earth, fire, water, wind. You got me on those. To quote Avatar... Even metal is just a part of earth that has been purified and refined. Yeah, okay, look, when a Nickelodeon show is making more sense than you, movie, this is not off to a good start. So the one thing the Emperor couldn't defeat though was time. He was getting old fast. So he sent out his best friend and ally to find a witch. Well, this is an interesting looking gingerbread house. So the witch promised to help him find a way to become immortal, but turns out his best friend and the witch got a little hubba hubba on. Along with other magic beyond imagining. You know, if you're going to use that to spy on someone, you really should oil it so it doesn't make that loud noise. I feel like they would have noticed what was going on. So the witch reads off the spell in a language the emperor can't understand. So yeah, I don't see how you could possibly get tricked in that situation. Oh, wait. Though after the spell, he then gives her a little gift. Not exactly what she wanted. Of course, then, the stupidity of him not knowing what language she was speaking in earlier finally comes into play as she curses him to be, well... Mmm, yeah. I don't think Pepto-Bismol is going to help if it's coming out the wrong end. We then skip to... O'Connell fly fishing. Well, hey, this is the first character we've seen from the other movies. Maybe he'll actually do something worthwhile. Monica. Monica, and this is something for girls. Ah! Ah! Mm -hmm. Sorry, what? Bite on this. Aren't you supposed to put them inside the barrel and then shoot them? So yeah, it turns out domestic life isn't being quite as kind to O'Connell. Oh, but maybe Evie's doing better. So it turns out Evie has actually turned the stories of their encounters with the mummy into a book series. Mrs. O'Connell, we're all dying to know. Is the Scarlett O'Keefe character really based on you? Honestly, I can say she's a completely different person. Well, you know, she's not wrong. Now there are some rumors about why the previous actress didn't participate in this movie. One of them was that she had just become a mother, and I can understand that can be very time consuming and I give props to her for respecting that. The second one is, um, she read the script. So yeah, life is kind of dull for the O'Connells now, what can you expect after you have a living rotting corpse shooting swarms of pestilence at you from his mouth? Normal life can seem a little mundane. Until they asked me when would there be another mummy adventure. Yeah, but you did promise the publisher a third book. I know, but I spend my nights staring at a blank page completely blocked. I can't help but feel that this is the writers of the movie staring right at us going, this is what happened to us, this is what they made us do. We didn't want to do it, but they just made us do it. 
We then skip to Alex, who's actually now grown up and doing his own archaeological dig in China, where coincidence, the Jet Li mummy is at. And if you can't tell it's Alex, don't worry, they spell it out for you. I thought I was looking at your father. You really are Rick O'Connell's son. Yeah, well, hopefully after today, you'll be known as Alex O'Connell's father. So anyways, after most of Alex's crew is killed by the booby traps in the place, mostly because they suffer as the same disease from brawn, they can't run in more than one direction, they manage to find Mummy Jet Li, who's supposed to be in this sarcophagus. So when they find the mummy in the other two movies, they get attacked by scarabs and flesh-melting acid and booby traps of all sorts. What happens this time? They get attacked by ninjas? Seriously? So Alex's parents meet up with him to go see his archaeological finds opening at a new museum. Of course, after picking up probably the most annoying character in this movie. You're in China. But they get interrupted by... Uh, Chinese Nazis. Who want the two of them to wake up the Jet Li mummy so they can rule the world. Because of... Chinese Nazis! So they're then about to kill them when Alex and the ninja from earlier, not sure how she switched sides so suddenly, come in to save them. But during the fighting, the Jet Li mummy wakes up and begins to attack. <laughs> Man, when the mummy woke up the other two times, he, he ripped out people's organs. He, he turned them into rotting flesh. Oh crap, what's this one gonna do? Meep, meep. He runs away. So yeah, that's my first complaint about this mummy. The rest, mostly, it's really about the way he looks. I mean, I want to say he looks better because the CGI had evolved in the nine years since the first mummy. But, well, he's just a statue. There's no rotting bones, no peeling flesh. The most we get is when the rock around his face breaks, and even that looks fairly normal, at least compared to this. How am I supposed to take this guy seriously when I'm not the least bit intimidated by him? So they chase after the mummy, and they actually have some adequate artillery to deal with it. But unfortunately, this mummy has the same ability as the rock in Fate of the Furious. The ability to hit missiles out of the way. Eh, it's common. And it unfortunately leads to this scene. This is why people didn't see this movie! Did he just rip off his face and throw it at him? This mummy might be a little cooler than I thought. But the mummy finally loses them by unleashing his ultimate attack. A uh, slip and slide technique. You get wet on slip and slide. You get cool, it's a long wet ride. Slip and slide. So they then learn that the mummy is planning to raise his army to take over the world and blah, blah, blah. Wasn't this in the last one? Anyways, they agree to go and kill him because... They're bored. Once they get to the location the Emperor is going to locate his army, they arm up and prepare to make a stand against him. Tommy's good, Dad, but the cocking mechanism always jams. Here, check out the Russian PPS personal assault weapon. Look, kid, I put down more mummies in my time than you. You put down one mummy, Dad. Yeah, same mummy, twice. You know, reminding us that the other two movies are better than this one is not going to make it look any better. So the Chinese Nazis show up and have a gunfight, which is actually pretty entertaining, but they get pushed back and the Chinese Nazis start to move up on them. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. You are making a stand at the place where a, a dragon emperor's mommy needs to go to locate his army so he can raise them from the dead. And the only thing separating them and this place is a giant ravine with a tiny narrow wooden bridge and you leave it intact. All you had to do was cut a couple ropes and poof, problem solved, no more army, blah, 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 let's all go home. But since they didn't cut the bridge like any sane person would do, they end up getting pinned down. So the ninja decides that she needs to call for some help. What? What? Abominable snowman! The Tibetans call him Yeti! Oh, well, since they have a native name, that does make it perfectly plausible that WHAT THE F*** IS THAT THING?! And I have no words to describe how I feel about this scene. All I can tell you about these things is that they're NFL fans. Of course, then the mummy shows up and defeats him with his ultimate move! Water bending.
Is that the most deadly attack you know? I am still so not intimidated by this guy. So then the sun causes an avalanche to try and trap the mummy, but O'Connell saves him and ends up getting wounded himself. So they have to take O'Connell to the nearest place they can, Shangri-La, to the fountain of plot convenience. What? It's just Shangri-La? Were, were you going to be surprised? Uh, do, you, do you think it makes no sense? Are you just confused as I am? Here, we do actually find how the ninja is related to the mummy. We find out that she's the daughter of the witch that gave herself immortality and gave it to her daughter so that they could protect the world against the dragon emperor should he ever arise. But then Jet Li Mummy arrives to go into the fountain and achieve his final form. Apparently using the leftover CGI from Mortal Kombat Annihilation. So the mummy takes the daughter back to the tomb to raise his army. Not sure why he needed them other than to give our characters a reason to follow him. So the army isn't invincible until they get past the Great Wall. The witch realizes this and thinks that they're gonna need a little backup. I sacrifice my immortality and that of my daughter so that you may rise this day. I do this completely without asking my daughter at all! But admittedly, this is the coolest part of the movie, where all the people buried under the wall, including the witch's ex-boyfriend, er, late boyfriend, get up and attack the army and have, I'll admit, is a pretty cool zombie versus statue battle. As dumb as that may sound, the movie makes it look pretty cool. I feel like the whole movie was built around this, that this was the point of the movie and they just had to come up with a plot to somehow lead us to this scene. I also love this one part where one of them accidentally knocks off another one's head and tries to put it back on. So they get a dagger that can kill the mummy if you stab it through the heart and have a final showdown that isn't bad but just lacks the rivalry from the other two. And the way they kill him after the dagger breaks is actually pretty creative. So the mummy and his army are defeated and the souls are laid to rest and the movie ends with our heroes celebrating, dancing their night away. So that was Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Is it disappointing? Yes. Is it a bad movie? Maybe? I mean yes, it does drag at times and is exceptionally goofy, but that may be because I keep comparing it to the previous two. Most of the action scenes are decent and they keep the plot simple and the characters enjoyable. Most of the time. Had they taken off the mummy from the title and just called it Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, separate from the first two, I might have liked it. So yeah, it's definitely the worst of the three, but I can understand how some people may be able to enjoy it. That being said, I'm probably never going to rewatch it, but here's hoping Tom Cruise does a better job. I'm the Bad Weather Gamer, and as always, I have another video coming soon, so stay tuned in.